Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk back again with you guys for another episode of our tactical breakdown series and in particular our loan report series, our show in which we look at the players that Arsenal have sent on loan and after the January transfer window we've got a staggering 30 plus players now to talk about in these shows and yet we're going to try and condense all that information down into a half an hour bite-sized package. We're going to fail, but we're going to try. Um, I'm very happy to be joined, uh, as always, by Ben from the Marseille View. How are you doing, mate? You good, you well? Good, good. Yeah, a lot. Um, I mean, it's, it makes these shows more pleasant when the players that I have to debrief are doing well, right? Let's put it that way. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes. And uh, as you can see from the thumbnail on today's show, uh, following Balogun, of course, features heavily, uh, mm. or Balogun, I should say, um, who has been doing brilliantly well for, for Rons, who I continue to try my best to pronounce as best <laughs> I feasibly can. Um, but uh, it's, uh, I think it probably, if you go back and watch the show of all the loan reports we've done, my pronunciation probably changes every single episode. But you know, I'd like to tell you it gets better, but it's not not really the case, mate. <laughs> you see, at least you're honest. I appreciate the honesty. I really do. Um, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, everybody joining us live in the show, and of course those that are watching on catch up as well. Um, yes, of course, Ben joins us to talk about all of our Liga uh, loanies, of which this season there are plenty, and joined us last season, of course, to update on William Saliba, who has done brilliantly this season for Arsenal. All that talk we, we of Willie, won't he stay? He yeah. stayed, and look what's happened. So. Yeah, unbelievable stuff from him. Um, we kick off with the only real place to kick things off, and that's with following Balogun, who has done amazing. Uh, 15 goals now, 14 of them in Liga. Um, ben, what a player. <laughs> um, look, he smashed it. Um, I was I was thinking in preparation of this show, because you and I obviously prepared this like a couple of days in advance, so I tried to do a bit of research. Um, and I was, I was looking... I mean, Arsenal have produced... You could say a number of talents, haven't they? Like in, 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 I'd say in recent years, if you look at like John Jules or, or Miguel Aziz and, and those types of players that have been probably, from what I remember following Arsenal, probably more highly regarded than Balogun ever has um, in terms of their profiles and their loans and stuff. And fair play to Balogun. He's gone on loan to, to Reims. Um, he started really well, but he's he's been on fire the last, the last couple of months since the World Cup ended and, and the season restarted. He's... I'd say he's been probably top five players in, in Liga, um, and he's the top scorer in that league, ahead of Mbappe, Neymar, Messi, um, you know, those types of players. So I think one big thing that, um, that, that has done well, at, well, that, that's gone his way at the house is that they hired Will Still. So they, they got rid of their manager just after the World Cup, I believe, or just before. Um, oh. And Will Still, um, for those that don't know him, is is probably living our dream for all of us, which is he started getting into football by, by being addicted to football manager and staying up all night playing it and then did his wow. coaching badges. And he's only 30 years old, um, speaks French English like I can. So I identify to that respect. But um, it's he's, what, 11 or 12 games unbeaten since he took the job. Mm. Um, and, and Balogun's, I mean, he was already on form, but certainly it must be a massive help and a massive boost to him to have him to have a you know an English manager um, who who th there's been um, there was a, do a, s a small documentary about Will Still on, on French TV last week on French football TV and he's he's on his back constantly he's always like you know Balo Balo why didn't you do that Balo you could have done mm. better there Balo look at look at where your mate was so it probably not a coincidence that we've seen a, a, another step up for Balogun um, in terms of his recent four I think he's since the last time we did this he scored six or seven goals. Yeah. Um, and yeah. he's he's scored goals against some hat of the big as teams well. as well. Yeah, yeah, he got a hat trick a couple of weeks ago against Lorient. Yeah, it was uh, quite the, the third goal in particular. It was Van Persie esque with the ball, long ball yes. over the top, and the the volley. Um, and Lorient are, are one of the informed teams, aren't they? They're flying high. They're like fifth or sixth. So mm -hmm. for them to for them to beat them and for him to get a hat trick against a team that's had one of the best defenses in the league, fair play. He's 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 smashing it. Yeah, he's done brilliantly, and and this. But bears the question, and, and chat box, I'll be interested to know what your thoughts are on this in the sense of what on earth are Arsenal going to do <laughs> you know, in the summer? Because you've got Gabriel Jesus, who you brought 45 million quid on. He's got injured. Eddie Nketiah has come in and become the top scorer at Arsenal and done really, really well. And now you've got this young, I say young, I think he's 22 uh, now. And 22. you're looking at... A yeah, and you're looking at a player that is, is top scorer at 21 still. He turns 22 in, oh, yeah. in July. 
Um, and he's done brilliantly, scoring more goals than obviously the Arsenal strikers have scored individually. Uh, playing obviously a very different system, different league, um, which will obviously come into things. But you can't take away from how well William Saliba has obviously transitioned from his loan spell in, in France. There's no reason as to why Balogun couldn't also do that. So what, as, as obviously a Marseille fan, but also with your, your attachment to Arsenal, what would you do? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, we, we were looking for a striker Marseille in, in January and I was thinking, let's, let's screw Ross and, and use the relationship yeah. we have with Arsenal and sign Balogun. <laughs> um, <laughs> it wouldn't have been, I mean, a, it would have been interesting to see that deal terminated and then him sent on loan to Marseille. That would well, have been I, an I, interesting I, I dynamic. Have... Well, I would have thought we'd try to sign him permanently, to be honest, mm. um, if there was the opportunity to do so. We had like a 15, 20 million budget. So, I mean, it, it all it all comes down to what do Arsenal want to do? Um, he's an academy product. Um, you know, he's, I think, will still, for, for the job he's doing at Hans, I'd be very surprised if he isn't linked to, to a, a championship or PL job in the summer, at least, we'll see. Um, but, but, I mean... Um, he having having that sort of manager that, that speaks English, but also is, is, seems to have taken you know pays special attention to him and, and puts him through the pace of training and and spends extra hours video coaching him and stuff. So I think that's where the, the relationship's helpful. And, and Arteta and his 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 coaching team do that kind of thing, right? And I guess the question for first of all for the club is right: uh, do the qualities that we've seen him show? In Ligue 1 this season, Warren is spending at least pre-season with him and, and putting him through that paces and seeing what he's learned since we left him. Um, or is it a case of we cash in on him or, or leave him on loan for another year somewhere? And, and maybe like Saliba, who started the loan system back at his club at Saint-Étienne, who, were, who weren't top performers and then went to Nice and then to Marseille, who were, who were challenging for Champions League qualification and, and the French title last year, is... is I mean, Balogun's a little bit older, but is that another another step next year? Where, whether it's a French club or, or a Spanish club, they they try and find a club that is actually under pressure for results and where he's got a bit more competition up front, and see if he can hack it, um, challenging for honours and <clears throat> and trying to to, to play um, a, a more leading role with a bigger team and, and more pressure. So. It, it, that's that's the, the dilemma, really, and and also, what will he want to do? Will he want to go back and, and play second fiddle, or will he want a starting place? Yeah, I think it's that's the question: is is whether or not you bring is, is he going to be up for being in a three way battle at Arsenal uh, in a side that will you'd imagine have Champions League football next season, uh, and of course be competing across multiple competitions? Is he going to get the minutes he needs at a really important age to? continue this this rise um the chat box people are saying um keep all three for the champions league uh michael says uh we still we could send him to somewhere like west ham uh next season some people have actually said loan him to no, a he's premier talking league about the manager he's talking about will still to west ham. oh that's, that's not going to happen yet i mean I, will still I, to west ham yeah, yeah it'd, be, it'd be suicidal for him to, to leave a club where he's just literally got his first job and go to West Ham and, and see his career fall apart this early. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is a bit of a mad one. It's he, a great I, mean, yeah, he's, I was looking at him on, on Wikipedia of all places just to kind of see his track record. But he's he's been in, like, obviously the professional game since his early 20s. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's an amazing career. Uh, it's worth, Jeff, found, there's a video from last week on YouTube, you can probably find it, um, where he where does he the interview. The <laughs> yeah, no, no, where the, Will still does, does like half the, the thing in English, half the thing in French and stuff. And you see him in training and you see him with Balogun, like proper taken to one side and go, mm. mate, come on, pull your socks out. We're not here for a, for a kickabout. Yeah. Um, and it's, yeah, it's worth watching, but... Um, it does, I'll it, make sure it, to try and find it. Yeah, it does yeah. beg the question of, of it's a, it's going to be an interesting dilemma. But again, if you're, you know, if you're Arsenal, you'd rather have this type of of of, of dilemma, which is a good dilemma to have. We've got a, a striker from our academy, so yet again, puts light on our academy and the quality of the development being done there. Who's who's firing on all cylinders, and we now need to decide and figure out what we want to do with him. And you can either cash in for him on on for a tidy sum, I'd imagine at least twenty million with the form he's showing, or you cash in on Nketiah and you keep him in the squad or you keep all three and, and run the risk that he doesn't kick on fulfill his potential because he's not getting as much game time. Um, but it's it's better to have these problems than, than have someone out on loan who's not performing and then you're like, right, just offload them and 
crap, it's another it's another fail for for the academy, right? Don't eat say twenty million because I know they're going to be chat box people in the chat box going twenty million. Are you mad? So we want fifty. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, with the way money's going in football, who on earth can blame Arsenal for asking for significantly more these days? Let's uh, let's talk about uh, your boy, uh, your club, Nuno Tavares. Of course, mm. he's out uh, injured right now, but has enjoyed a, a fine spell of form since the World Cup. He's been much better. I mean, he got sent off early January. Uh, he lost his temper. Um, he was banned for three games, but since he's come back, I mean, um, his first game back in the lineup was uh, it was two weeks ago at home to Monaco, and we we were struggling in that game. We were one 0 down at half time. Um, not much, nothing to do with him, but we, we they were all over us, and it could have been three 0 at half time. And interestingly, and this is this has got now I've got a lot of us thinking, uh, you know, we, I rate him. I think a lot of Marseille fans rate him, and. He's got his challenges, which is sometimes his positional awareness, his football IQ, his reading of the play. Um, but he, uh, in the second half, at half time, basically, we were struggling. So our manager took Genduzi off, who was having a poor game, put another defender on, and he moved Tavares out to the right wing back role. All right. And, that, and, and all of us were thinking, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> Tavares struggles on the left at the best of times, but he, he had a blinder. He had like something like nine shots in the second half. Um, and he yeah. he turned the game around, so we equalised through through. He had the shot, and then Sanchez bundled in the the equaliser. But um, but he was he was dangerous on that on that right wing back role, and and I was watching it a bit worried, thinking, shit, I hope Arsenal aren't watching this because Arteta likes his sort of wing backs that cut back he inside does, yeah. and that that inverted sort of system, and he he can do that. I mean, and then we, we, we reconducted the experiment in the following league game away to Nantes. We won again, and he was again one of the top performers. And um, it's it sort of gets you thinking, right, well, because of his athletic quality and his technical ability, he can cut inside and he can get pass plays and stuff. And maybe he does need to probably learn when to pass and when to shoot and not always go for the, the, the hero ball or or the, or the mad, mad attempts. But that's... I didn't think he had that facet to his game of, of being able to switch sides and cut inside and, and actually become a bit of a playmaker. And he's, he's been really good in the last few games. It's a shame he's out injured, um, especially as we, we're playing PSG tonight in the cup in a couple of hours. And um, I would have I would have liked to see him run rings around Hakimi or, or their left back and, and cause them trouble because he's capable when he's on his on his on form and on his game. Um, I've, I've certainly appreciate him a lot more since I've seen that facet to his game. Yeah, I, I, he's again similar to Balogun, but obviously in different terms. Really intriguing as to what happens with him in the summer, because you'd imagine obviously it's more likely a, a move permanently away would would materialise. But Tierney's position in the squad is not assured, and with Zinchenko mm -hmm. being so established, I I kind of look at Tierney, and I think a lot of other people do as a player that may look to to move on to get more regular game time. And if Tavares is showing that ability to be more inverted and, and play on either flank and is young enough more so than Tierney that he could be more malleable to learning that yep. that style, maybe Arteta can mould him into a player that can play that way and move into midfield. He's It's the intelligence that I think obviously needs to be refined and to, his decision-making, yep. as you're saying, needs to be much better, but it can be. If not, they've certainly already made a profit, I think, on the £7 million they invested in him Definitely. if they do indeed tend to sell him. I saw Transfermarkt now rating at €18 million. Uh, Euros, um, so which obviously Transfermarkt is always a bit while, wow, but I actually think that's probably a fair uh, representation of the he's doubled his value, you know, since since that low move. So yeah, um, if Arsenal can get around twenty million by the end of the season, I think they would absolutely take that uh, for Nuno Tavares and a good bit of business in the market as well. Lastly, Ben, we need to talk about uh, our good friend uh, Nicola Pepe, uh, <laughs> a player that Arsenal desperately need to do well <laughs> this season, as we always say, so that they can get as much money for him as possible in the summer. He's now got eight goals and an assist across all competitions for Nice. Um, what have you made of him since the World Cup? He's he's been much better too. Um, and Nice Nice's firm, I mean, they smashed us at the weekend at home, um, which was our first defeat in twelve games or something, which was which was frustrating. But um, he he had a decent game. Uh, but he's he's been on form for Nice against uh, the, the smaller teams in recent weeks. Um, so he's. Again, not yet back to the level probably that he was that caused Arsenal to, to, to buy him and spend that much money on him. But he's showing certainly an upturn in form and um and needs to have changed coach, which which I think helps a lot. 
um, because they sacked Lucien Favre um, just just after or, or yeah just after the World Cup. So um, Pepe is, is, has seen an upturn in form, and he's certainly getting plenty of minutes. Um, I don't know if Nice will keep him permanently. I don't know if if there's a, an agreement in place with with Arsenal already as to a future potential transfer fee. But and there might be an option. Um, I think I think there is. Yeah, I think someone's mentioned in the chat twenty five million. That, I'm that not sure it's familiar. that high. Actually, I think it's lower than that. It could well, it could be. Well, we could research that. Yeah. But I mean, he's he's showing signs of enjoying his football again and, and he's establishing Nisa's starting eleven, which is a good sign for any player on loan that you're trying to offload if they're playing every game. You know? So it, I, we'll see. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the reports I'm reading now are suggesting it doesn't con- contain an option. Um, so maybe not, but it's... The, but it sounds about really the right price, report. like 20, 25 million, sadly. Yeah, I mean, he'll only have a year left on his deal, though, at the end of the That's season, it. which I think would probably bring it down to around 15 to 20 um, for a team to get hold of him. You can absolutely see a club like Nottingham Forest going in for him. <laughs> uh, you laugh, but it's so true. Like you you it's can true. see that happening. Um, maybe even Marseille um, would look. At I hope so. Jesus, mate. No, no thanks. <laughs> I mean, that kind of tells you where we're at <laughs> with Nicola Pepe. But well, as a I, I rate him, right? But I would have had him before we went to Arsenal. I would have had him and, and we were linked with him, but the money was, was just mm. ridiculous. But, um, I, I don't. I mean, I, I just don't think he's up to the level. Marseille three, four years ago, when we were a bit rubbish, yeah, I would have had him. But we, I think we've got better players now in that position, and we've certainly got a work ethic and expectations in terms of discipline and 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 you know efforts in training and all of that. So I don't know if he can go back to a big club straight away, but certainly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Nottingham Forest is probably a bit harsh, but a West Ham or or a German club like a, a, a Frankfurt or somewhere like that, he could come good again because he's still young enough to to, to, to rediscover form. It's Fifty-two million pounds. I still can't get over the amount of money <laughs> we pay. For Nicholas Pepe, unbelievable scenes. Well, um, at least and- he's showing an upturn in form, and it's yeah. make, it's going to make it easier for Arsenal to offload him for a decent price. That's that's the way no, to look it at it now. Yeah, we've got hope that he does well between now and the end of the season. That's that's what Arsenal fans should be hoping for. Ben, thank you so much for your time, mate. As always, tell people where they can find you. Yeah, you can find me um, or find us at the Massey View on Twitter. Any questions or stuff. But guys, just keep enjoying Arsenal football and keep uh, let's let's hope for a push for the title. Indeed, Ben. Thank you. We'll speak to you, you next soon. month when we get our round up and hopefully Balogun's bagged another fourteen goals by then. Maybe. <laughs> uh, we'll Take care, guys. <laughs> Bye. Have a good one, mate. See you later. Much appreciate Ben's input. As always, you can find him on Twitter at 91 Immortal or through the guys at the Marseille View. You can check them out there. Let's move on to our other players that we need to look to. Um, we've got a couple of expert insights. Not the not everyone we've got. Uh, hopefully by uh, March time, we'll have you experts for nearly all of the main kind of key focuses. But you've got two more expert insights today. First of all, to learn all about Austin Trusty at Birmingham, we've got Sammy, uh, sorry, Tom. Tommy, I'm confirmed with Sammys and Tommies at the moment. Uh, we've got Tommy from Blues Focus to give you all the updates on Trusty. Hi, I'm Tommy from Blues Focus, and this is my update on Arsenal and the Austin Trusty. The slow watch episode came out at the perfect time as Austin Trusty grabs a 97th minute winner against Swansea at the weekend. I was there celebrating like a madman. Uh, you can check out my reaction to that goal on my vlog that I do over at Blues Focus. Uh, but since I was last on the show in late November, our form hasn't been the best, including League and FA Cup games. We've only won three, drew two, and lost six. Trusty's form before was flawless, but since the World Cup break, he's been, like many players in the squad, tired and uh, a bit rusty, perhaps, because of the break. He's lost a bit of that sharpness in those key moments that made him stand out earlier in the season. Like not being too quick to get to players or not being as tight as he possibly could and allowing players to uh, turn and shoot. But to say it's entirely Trusty's fault is wrong, you know. It's a team issue and that's why it's so important that we stopped that at the weekend. It was a big boost for the players and particularly us fans as well. I mean, a point would have been nice enough. I thought Djokovic had got that through that late equaliser, but to win it after that was, you know, like I said, amazing. (laughs) We've still been playing him in the back five. However, recently we've been experimenting playing him at left back, moving Manny Longello to left midfield, making more of a 4-2-3-1. We've tried this at Swansea. It worked. We turned a defeat into a win. It also worked in the FA Cup at Forest Green. We were 1-0 down at half 
half-time and turn that game around 2 to win 2-1. So I'd like to see it on Friday against the Albion. Big game, that is. It could really define our season. But hopefully the win at the weekend, hopefully, has lit the fire to try and get some points back on the board and try and get as far away from that relegation zone as possible. Overall, though, I've still been a massive fan of Austin Trustee in these past few months. He's really been a key player at the back, particularly after we've lost Harley Dean due to injury. I'm doing the quotation marks really because that he's not really injured. He's just got a contracts clause where he gets a pay rise after a certain amount of games and we were playing him earlier in the season as one of our most crucial centre-backs but because the 25% that was supposedly meant to be sold to Paul Richardson and Max Maxi Lopez fell through they pulled out and ever since he's miraculously just been injured. He's missed his partner in crime. I don't think that him playing alongside Kevin Long has worked out too well, who has been bought from Burnley. I like him. I think he's got a good attitude. It's just that he hasn't played that many games in recent years. So it's the rust as well, I think, that's sort of settled in for him as well. But he didn't do terribly against Swansea. He did OK. Um, that back five, though, would be much better if we had Harley Dean in there, who is a regular experienced championship player. Before I leave, I do just want to say that we fans are currently campaigning for our owners, BSHL, to sell the club. It's been years of decline and decay, and us fans deserve better. It's also incredibly unfair on players like Trusty, who are still yet to miss a single minute of this season. And because of the lack of investments and care around the club, could perhaps lead to him getting injured, miss the end of the season, lose his form, or because we can't get a second choice defender to let him rest for a couple of games. And for that to happen to Trusty would be very unfortunate. So BSHL out. It's time to go. Sell the club. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more from us, you can check out our YouTube channel at Blues Focus TV. Our Twitter and Facebook is at Blues Focus and Instagram and TikTok is at Blues underscore Focus. Thank you for watching. Arsenal are going to win the league and keep right on. <laughs> oh, I've just realised I'm not recording on my mic. That's a bit daft. You gotta love Tommy, he's brilliant. I love the effort that goes in that he really puts into, you know, making the videos for us about Trusty. And I think we can all empathize with the fact that a club with the owners that we don't particularly want, although ours have turned out pretty good, it seems in the end. Um, but uh, yeah, certainly Birmingham hoping for better things for them. And of course, that'll have an impact on Trusty. But so far, four goals and assists so far this season. Um, 0.83 shot creating actions per 90, 44.4% success rate in his take ons, which for a centre back is very good. 66. 6.7% pass completion. He's attempting 0.52 crosses per game. Uh, also attempting 2.38 tackles per game, 1.72 blocks uh, per game. 4.17 clearances per 90 and 1.38 interceptions. It still remains to be seen what will happen with Austin Trusty between now and the end of kind of the, the summer transfer window. The expectation has always been that he will probably move on. And of course, with the signing of Jakob Kivior in the January transfer window, it is probably more likely now that he will move on either on a permanent deal or on another loan. Um, he is in his mid-20s. He's deceptively old i don't really want to use the word old as a 20 you know mid 20s considering i'm at 28 but uh you know it's it is for a player like that but we paid around three odd million quid for him and hopefully arsenal will be looking to make a profit on trusty in the summer um but best of luck of course uh to tommy and Birmingham for the rest of the season hope for a quick turnaround in form but of course we'll get more updates on trusty in next month's show Speaking of getting updates, uh, Brooke Norton and Cuffey were looking to bring in uh, some expertise around Coventry. He was recalled in the January window from Rotherham, who, after appointing a brand new coach, really kind of fell out of favour and Arsenal thought it was the best idea to bring him back, send him somewhere else in the championship. And he's now found a place at Coventry where he's playing. Um, still doing fairly well, um, but there have been some concerns raised about how raw he still looks. Uh, he's kind of jumped into his first few games at Coventry and getting some feedback from some of the Coventry supporters that I've spoken to. It's not started as kind of impressively as he did at Rotherham. Um, and they are, I think that the shake-up has kind of affected him a little bit. We're hoping to see some more consistency appear in his game. But I'm pretty happy with what I've seen in the player so far. Uh, looking then at Charlie Patino. Unfortunately, no expertise on Charlie Patino this week. We'll hopefully be bringing you more on the uh, Blackpool midfielder from our experts uh, in the following weeks and months to come. Um, but a really big month for Charlie Patino as he scored his first goal against a Premier League side. Of course, Blackpool lost their game against Southampton 2-1 in the FA Cup, but Patino got a very good goal, instinctive finish in the box and continues to impress and will return to Arsenal in the summer as a player that I know and you know there's plenty to be excited about. 
Now, there are plenty of players that we still need to go through. But before we do, uh, I'd like to introduce you, to, uh, introduce you rather, to D from Back of the Nest, who's going to be providing us with updates on Sambi Lakonga. So let's hear his thoughts on not only the, desire, the decision to loan Lakonga into Crystal Palace, but also how he got on on his debut game against Manchester United. What's going on, people? It's Steve from Back of the Nest giving my thoughts on the Lukonga move. And also, I'll be quickly mentioning the cameo that he had against Manchester United. So let's start off with what I thought about the Lukonga move. In all honesty, I was very happy. I know some Arsenal fans weren't really that keen on, on Lukonga. I know that there's been a bit of trouble um, with his defensive work and you guys wanted a bit more from him. But in all honesty, how I saw it, um, as a Palace fan, he's stepping down a level which could help him, especially with, with expectations. He's working with a legend in itself, Patrick Vieira. And, you know, he'll have more consistent game time at Palace. So overall, I was very excited when we did get him, even though it's a short-term low move. I feel like in the long term, there is a potential to get him if it is a success because of the types of talent that you guys are after in the summer, especially in midfield. So overall, I was very pleased um, with the move. And I feel like if he does play consistently, which I think he will do, he'll be a success. And quickly mentioning the cameo that he had against Manchester United, it wasn't for that long. He came on in the second half when Casemiro got sent off. And in all honesty, what I've expected from him, kind of shown. We saw glimpses of his strengths rather than his negatives that I know you guys were talking about, especially with, with his defensive work. The positives in the Man United game was we desperately needed a fielder who can get on the ball and pull out passes. And Lukonga seemed like the player. He was eager to get on the ball, eager to make forward passes. And I feel like that's what we've been missing at Palace all season long. So overall, lots of people were happy with his performance. They thought it was positive. And of course, there were a few moments where you can see his defensive work, even though Man United didn't attack as much, his positioning and the way he was, you know, um, going for balls. You could tell that he's a bit rusty there. But then again, as I mentioned, Vieira's his manager. He's only been training in a few days and it looked like he had a bit of chemistry there. So hopefully we see a bit of Lukonga. It was positive at the start. I was happy when we got him on loan. And, you know, I'll keep giving you guys updates as the season goes on. But thank you for having me on. Much appreciate D uh, from Back of the Nest uh, for giving us the updates. You've probably seen D around maybe on Dan Potts' channel. He's been on here when we've done our Behind Enemy Lines shows that we used to uh, kind of looking ahead to away games and stuff. But uh, he'll be giving us updates every month on La Conga, so you won't need to worry about having to watch Crystal Palace if that's not your kind of thing. Uh, speaking of getting extra expertise, uh, we'll also be getting expertise on Marquinhos next month. He's not yet played for Norwich, but we'll be getting some more expertise on him and how he's getting on for the Canaries after joining them on loan until the end of the season. Uh, we won't be getting any specific expertise on Cedric. I didn't feel as though we needed to pour the resources of the channel into uh, into getting updates on Cedric. We'll keep you updated on how he's getting on at Fulham, but I think we all know that his future probably lies elsewhere at the end of the season. Ainsley Maitland Niles, though, has continued to play for Southampton. 14 appearances so far, still without a goal or assist, but from what I've heard and when I spoke to a couple of Southampton reporters when I was down there uh, for the game when we drew 1-1 is that it's not gone amazingly well and they don't think he'll be signing on a permanent deal. And so Arsenal therefore may struggle to sign, uh, to get rid of him uh, for a significant fee. And that seems harsh, but they have been looking to kind of move him on for a long time. And that bid from Wolves that we turned down all that time ago now seems like a big, big miss uh, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, Runison still playing for Al Anyaspor uh, in Turkey. 22 appearances so far, still the number one goalkeeper. He's conceded 40 goals uh, in those 22 games and only kept three clean sheets so far. Pablo Marie, really good news on him. He's returned to action after, of course, suffering that horrific stabbing incident in an Italian shopping centre. Uh, he's now made 14 appearances, scored one goal, kept uh, or rather conceded 17 uh, goals whilst being in the defence, but has helped to keep four clean sheets for Monza, who are looking like real potential relegation survivors, which means that he would see that option in his loan deal activated that would see him move on a permanent move to Italy in the summer. Arthur Okonkwo has uh, left from uh, Crew Alexandria. He had that loan deal terminated. And he's now gone out to Austria to play for Sturmgratz. And we'll continue to bring you updates on him. But he did very well uh, for Crew, And they were very uh, annoyed that they lost him. Uh, he considered 35 goals in 27 appearances, but kept 10 clean sheets. Was doing really really well. Uh, Bireth still playing for Valvike. He's returned to action a little bit recently. He hasn't been playing too much though. Only eight appearances, two goals 
uh, was a really impressive player for the under-21s, but hasn't necessarily been able to kick on whilst playing abroad this season. Same with Flores. Marcelo Flores, very highly highly rated young player, uh, playing for Real Oviedo. Again, not necessarily been able to impress as much as he would have liked. 14 appearances, one assist so far. Miguel Aziz uh, was a record from his time in Ibiza. <laughs> I'm not sure many people want to be recalled from Ibiza these days, but he needed to be after having a really poor loan deal. He's now gone to Wigan Athletic on loan. He was signed there by uh, Colo Torre and Kevin Betsy, of course, was part of the Arsenal recruitment. Uh, sorry, was part of the Arsenal youth setup uh, only last season. But he, uh, I don't know if he's still at the club after Colo Torre was sacked, but Torre was very quickly dismissed from the club. But Aziz is at Wigan and will be there until the end of the season. We'll be bringing you updates on how he gets on um, between now and the end of the campaign. Nikolai Moller continues to play. 16 appearances, three goals, one assist so far this season. Playing for Den Bosch. Of course, he joined last year as well. He spent plenty of time now uh, over there in the Netherlands playing for them. Tyrese John George remains injured, and I probably think that we can all agree he'll be moving on at the end of the season. Uh, Salah Adin Uladam Hand has been recalled from his whole City loan deal, which means they won't have an option to sign him at the end of the season. They had an option to buy a clause in that loan deal. He is now returned, did not go back out on loan, and will be part of Mehmet Ali's under 21s squad for the rest of the campaign. And we'll then see what happens with him in the summer. Tim Akinola continues to play well for Chesterfield. 19 appearances now, already stepping up the amount of times he's playing for the club. One assist so far. Harry Clark, who was spending time in the championship with Stoke, he's been sold to Ipswich. Um, he put a very kind of heartfelt message onto his social media feeds about ending his time with Arsenal after a number of years with the club. So we wish Harry Clark all the best and hope that he does very well indeed in his permanent time away from Arsenal. Omar Rekic, if you remember, was having a torrid time at Sparta Rotterdam. He's been recalled as well and then sent out on loan with Aziz to Wigan um, and will play there and has already actually started. He started his first game for Wigan in a nil-nil draw, uh, played 55 minutes and uh, helped keep a clean sheet playing in the back three there, which was a turn up for their form of late. Uh, Alex Kirk continues to play at air, doing really well. 19 appearances, two goals, two assists, five clean sheets as a centre-back, doing well. Maybe one to keep an eye on when he comes back on, but I think, again, level-wise, he is going to fall below the expectations of a Premier League side. Ryan Alabiosu, you might remember him. He was being touted as a potential option for a right wing-back role at Arsenal. He went to Scotland to play with Kilmarnock. He's playing still regularly, 23 appearances so far this season, but no goals or assists for him. Uh, Mazida Gungo playing at the moment for Crawley, 15 appearances 14 goals conceded three clean sheets playing quite regularly for them and doing well but again another player that I don't necessarily think we'll see reach that level to get into the Arsenal side Ezra Herry has been recalled from his time uh, in non-league action now he's gone to Finland uh, to play potentially uh, moving towards a European qualification spot he's got a lot to fight for and he's already played two games starting both of them in those two appearances though didn't manage to keep a clean sheet didn't manage to get the wins and three goals were conceded uh, Tom Smith was also recalled from his loan goalkeeper from uh, Bromley, he's now been sent to Colchester, although he's not played so far for them. Uh, Taylor Foran has been sent on loan to Hartlepool and sat on the bench for their first game since he joined them on loan for the rest of the campaign. Uh, Billy Vigar and Kido Taylor Hart have also joined Derby, but they've not yet played for the League One side. And lastly, uh, Nathan Butler Oyedeji, who you may have recognised from the uh, the appearances in the mid-season break, if you like, against like of Leon uh, and AC Milan. He played in those fixtures. He's been on the bench, actually, in the Premier League a couple of times. He's joined Accrington Stanley uh, on loan until the end of the season and made his first appearance for the team. Didn't manage to get a goal or assist in that, but good to see him uh, getting plenty of minutes in Accrington Stanley's side straight away, not having to wait for any opportunity at all. And that completes all of your updates on all of the players that we've been looking at. Over 30 players now uh, we've got available um, and uh, we're going to be covering them in as much depth as feasibly possible for you uh, between now and the end of the campaign as I said we'll hopefully have more in-depth updates monthly on Patino, Bruno and Cuffey and Marquinhos and Norwich he's really one I'm excited about and interested to see what he could do. Um, do drop a like on the video. A lot of work goes into putting these shows together and getting all the experts' advice and stuff like that. Tell your friends if they're not fans of, uh, if they are, sorry, fans of listening and learning about Arsenal's players that are currently on loan because I think we're one of the only shows, maybe the only show that go out of our way to cover every single 
one of them. Um, so please do drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you want to get these monthly updates on the players with expert insight into how they're getting on. And as always, and most importantly, up the Arsenal. <laughs>